Hey there, my name is Charlie, and today I want to show you guys a little bit about factors in R. They're a very powerful data type to use, and there's a lot that you can really use them for, especially with ordinal data, and we'll really get into it later. But before I get into it, um, I wanted to give you guys a little introduction to myself. Um, I'm currently living in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, in the United States. I grew up in St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, most recently wrapped up a joint MBA and MS in data science at St. Joe's. Um, and well, I'm currently a data engineer as well, and I work on a number of research publications in my free time. And that's really about me. So without further ado, let's get into it. A basic overview of what we're going to be looking at today is a background, just tell you a little bit about what factors are, um, use cases, what can you use R factors for, which is obviously the most important part of this lesson, um, and then show you guys some examples um, for what you can specifically use these R factors for from both a nominal and ordinal perspective for data. Um, and don't worry, I will cover pretty much what everything means and break down the functions as best as possible. Um, and then we're gonna wrap up with a discussion around some of the topics that we covered, along with a challenge for you guys to actually tackle and apply some of this stuff that you guys are learning. And then a brief conclusion, just going over what we did. So, background. Our factors are a data structure that stores categorical data. As you can see in the bottom left, this you know, this isn't exactly a data structure, it's just a triangle. There's no order to this data structure. Let's say this is a vector. There's absolutely no order to what is going on here. Um, we want to transform it to this vector. In order to do so, we need something similar to a dictionary, um, which in this case is a factor with levels. So this here would be the levels for this factor, and this would be the output using R factors. So taking a little uh, step back, categorical data are attributes that describe some quality of an observation. So is it red? Is it blue? Is it green? Is it Sunday, Thursday, Wednesday? Um, something that is not easily to quantify, but is nominal in nature. Um, in other words, a name. So factors are helpful for actually creating this order and actually viewing the unique observations that are within a data set. So the levels for this guy right here, this factor would be Sunday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, all of these could apply if we had a large jumble of data and it would actually straighten it out into what is making up that data, which are these days. So also wanted to show you guys the actual factor function, which is how you create a factor in R. So factors in R are not automatically created. Um, it is very handy to be able to use vectors in R to create a factor. A vector, as you guys might have seen before, is essentially data that exists in some order. Um, similar to a data frame, you can merge multiple vectors to create a data frame, etc. So, breaking down this function up here into its components. The factor name is the resultant factor. So after you call this factor function and input the mandatory parameter followed by whatever optional parameters you guys want to use, that will create a factor, which will have default levels. Um, so, you know, the factor function is used to create a factor with all parameters within the parentheses, but you don't have to use all of these parameters, only this first one, which includes the vector. So, the levels are basically a vector that specifies the order of the factor, and default is alphabetical. So, if we had blue, red, green, it would be whichever letter comes first is first. Um, a better example would be if we had Alpha, Beta, and Charlie or so, um, it would be ordered in that way even if the vector first specifies Charlie. Um, it would be, that order of the levels would be changed. So 
labels. Labels are actually very handy because you can essentially create pseudonyms or aliases um, for levels. So if there's levels one, two, three, you can create it to where one maps to alpha, two maps to beta, etc. Um, so that it is easier to graph and actually visualize and use for something useful, especially if data is not clean, which it generally isn't. So exclude up here is actually used to include a vector or a set of values that indicates what should not be included in the factor as a level. And ordered is a Boolean that indicates whether the factor is ordered or not. Um, pretty handy, as you will see coming up. And nmax is the maximum amount of levels that can be in the factor. So getting to the good stuff is the use cases. So really, you have to divide what a factor is useful for into ordinal and nominal variables. Um, ordinal data has a specific order. An example of this is shirt sizes where you have you know, small, medium, and large, NBA rebound leaders. I don't know who is exactly in front, but, you know, Hakeem Olajuwon probably has a lot more than, say, Steph Curry. So there is a specific order to who has which amount of rebounds. And job preferences. Would you rather be a chef, um, you know, work at a, a theme park, or be a data scientist? Um, I'm sure everybody has a different order, and I'm sure that not every job appeals to someone on equal basis. So if a factor is ordinal, um, they're useful to really order the vectors correctly. So as I had said previously, the levels of t-shirts may indicate that small shirts are smaller than medium shirts, and medium shirts are smaller than large shirts, and so on. And you can apply this to a large section of data and do a lot of powerful things with it, which you'll see later. In terms of nominal variables, um, it's by name only, no specific order. Um, you know, is red better than blue? Maybe to you, um, maybe subjectively, but objectively they are pretty similar. They're just colors. Um, animals, furniture, Gatorade flavors, they're, they're just things that don't have a guaranteed specific order um, objectively. So if nominal, factors are useful to view distinct observations. So if we had a vector of colors, as we'll see later, um, they may include red, blue, and green, but there's no order to the colors because there is no preference in nature. So some examples. Oh, example A1, default factor order. Factors are ordered alphabetically by default. So for instance, extra large appears first when ordered, as you can see down here where my cursor is, even though it is larger than extra small because we did not specify the factor order anywhere yet. So we want to note that typo in extra small for later because we are gonna make a change. But to show you the process of creating a factor, first you have to create a vector where we have the sizes, then we print the sizes, this is what the vector looks like in that specific order, convert it into a factor um, and then print the factor where it will show the levels. What is the order of the levels that are contained within? Each observation is a different level. Example A2, correcting the data order. So manual, manually assigning levels helps to reorder this data. An extra small was misspelled, so it has no valid level as it shows up in NA. But to do so, we go sizes factor with levels. We declare the same factor that we had earlier in the previous slide. However, we add another parameter, which is levels. So for the levels parameter, we have extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. So data will be ordered in this order. Going down, we have extra large NA, where extra small would be because it is not a valid level small, medium, extra small, and so on. So example A3, verifying if a factor is a factor. To see if a vector's data type is a factor, we can use the is.factor function to return a Boolean. As you can see down here, if we print is.factor, 
and then we have our sizes factor with levels that we had in the previous slide, it returns true because it is a factor. Alternatively, we can use the class function to return the class of a vector. You can do this with many other data types and it is not specific to factors. So we, we would do the class function and what does it return for sizes factor with levels? It is a factor. Example A4, changing levels. So remember that typo that we saw in extra small? We can fix that. To fix it, we need to reference the position of extra small in the factor, which is position two, and reassign the name. So what is the first level? In this size is level with factors. It is extra large. If you remember when we assigned the vector, extra large was the first position. Therefore, in size is factor with levels, it will still be the first position. Now we go down here into the second position where the typo was extra small. When you print extra small, you see NA because it is not applicable because there was not a valid level. We then reassign the sizes factor with level at the second index extra small with an A. And then we print it. And what do we see? Extra small. So now there is a valid level, therefore it is a valid observation. Example A5, factors in a data frame. So as I covered previously, if you merge several vectors with the same amount of observations, you create, you can create a data frame, which is very helpful for graphing, which we will see in the next slide. But in order to do so, you need to push them to a data frame very simply um, and so on. So gender is not declared as a factor in the data frame below. Sizes are declared as a factor. So there are some two key differences. So to kind of show you how this process actually goes, we have our sizes factor with level levels factor. We have a price vector, which includes prices in dollar amounts for each shirt size that we're gonna graph later. And then we have a gender, male, female, male, um, essentially, you know, it's just three things. There's seven observations for each three vectors. You merge them together using data.frame into one data frame. What you get when you print this shirt catalog is this data frame to the right where my cursor is, where each observation is unique. <clears throat> now we're going to see how each attribute in this data frame is declared, you know, is it a factor? So gender, is it a factor? When we declared gender, did we put the factor function in there? No, therefore, when we say, is it a factor? We get false. If we put class, it would actually be a vector instead. Um, but when we look at sizes factor with levels, it is a factor. This is really handy when you're dealing with a lot of different attributes and you just want to see real quickly at a glance what's the data type what can i do with it so graphing that data frame example a6 so to graph it you can use plot bar plot G, ggplot or any other graphing function and the factors are listed in the correct order that we had specified earlier by the levels which is why i think they are very useful for ordinal data um, to actually graph it quickly without having to do any workarounds. Each individual size is described by its average price. If you'll recall, there were several observations with multiple prices. Most of them did not have several prices. Therefore, on this plot, we see small, medium, large. They have one observation and then extra large and extra small. You can see the two observations and the average between the two in essentially box plots. So when plotted, look at how the observations are plotted in level order. Extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. If we did not specify the level order, what would happen is that you would have extra large first and then extra small. And that doesn't really make any sense. So levels are really handy in helping keep things in order. So going back to what we actually use to get this graph, we just use the plot function. 
the x variable is the size of factor with levels. As you can see, extra small, small, medium, large, etc. And the y is the actual price in dollars. So what can you observe from this graph? You can see small, medium, large. Why is a large cheaper than a medium? Well, I mean, it is fictional data, but if you were looking at this as an analyst or a data scientist, what you might conclude is maybe there is an issue with supply and demand. Uh, maybe there just isn't enough demand to warrant large shirts. Therefore, people have to lower the price um, in order to sell this. This would essentially mean that most people are either medium or extra large. Therefore, you should produce only enough shirts to fulfill this demand and perhaps produce less large shirts to then stimulate the price a little bit back up. So we also have nice labels, X label, Y label, and the main title right here, shirt prices by size. So this will be covered in another lesson, but it's always good to get a little, you know, reiteration. This is example B1, where we are looking at a colors factor. It is nominal not ordinal as we have seen previously. First, we are going to declare a vector called colors that will include red, blue, green, and yellow. Then we will go into a colors vector where we are going to sample colors 10,000 times. And then we are going to institute a 20% probability of having red, 20% of having blue, 50% chance of having green and a 10% chance of having yellow. Once that is done, we'll take this colors vector, which will have 10,000 observations with data distributed in this way. And we are going to declare a factor. Once the factor is declared, we are going to print the levels of the color factor. Something key to note here is the order. The levels of the factor are alphabetical blue, green, red, and yellow versus red, blue, green, and yellow. This is a vector, this is a factor. That's why there is a difference between the order of the two. Going down, we want to actually graph this, graph the distributions that we know to be true. We know there to be 20% of blue, 20% of red, 10% of yellow, and 50% of green. Therefore, when we create the colors factor table, that's the distribution that we're gonna see. So first things first, we create that table. Then we go into a bar plot where we have the colors factor table from above. We have the Y label being the percentage frequency and the color are actually the levels of colors factor. Why is this handy? If we have blue, green, red, and yellow, and you were to declare the rainbow function, it would not work. However, if you have a vector or a levels of a vector that indicate red, blue, green, and yellow, or any other colors, and then you assign them to be a color, it will match up perfectly. So in this case, the levels of this vector and factor are blue, green, red, and yellow, as are the colors. So the colors and the observations match up nicely, and we see the colors in the correct order. Discussion. This is what we really want to take away from this presentation. First, how do factors differ from vectors and other data types? Of those, which example sets, A or B, showcase nominal factors? Which examples showcase ordinal factors and why? How did the levels of colors benefit the bar plot in example B? And what are three other applications that factors could be used for that I did not cover? Little challenge that I want to show you is to create a factor that orders a random distribution of motorcycles, cars, trucks, and semi-trucks by size in the order that they were listed here. So motorcycles are smaller than cars, etc. Then graph the results on a bar plot or plot using a vector of or factor of colors as shown in example B. That will be really great to cement understanding, but in conclusion, a factor is a data type that is useful for housing categorical data, be it nominal or ordinal. Some use cases, factor levels can be used to change factor orders and to see each unique observation quickly. And the examples we covered show that it is very simple to change the order of factor data. 
fix unclean data and graph data as grouped by a factor order. And that is really all that I have for you. So thank you so much and please tune in to our other lessons. Thank you.